In this video, we are going to be looking at turning inserts. We'll look at a quick overview of what a carbide turning insert is, what all the letters and numbers of an insert code stand for, and what they mean when picking an insert. A carbide insert consists of a mix of tungsten, carbon, silicon, and cobalt. These are added in varying quantities in dust form into dyes of various shapes, pressed, sintered in an oven, and then often coated. The code. The general ISO code for a turning insert falls into a sequence of four letters that describe the overall shape. Six numbers that define the size. Zero to two letters that signify a chip breaker. And a grade. The four letters. The first letter, shape. The first letter you encounter on an insert code refers to the surface shape. Each letter corresponds to a point angle. For example, C is rhomboidal, with a 80 degree angle, T is triangular, R is round, S is square, etc. When picking an insert shape, there are a few factors to first consider. The wider the angle, the stronger the insert, with a round R-shaped insert being the strongest edge, and a V-shaped 35-degree insert being the weakest. The amount of edges you can use on an insert, per face. For example, an S-square-shaped insert will have four usable edges per face, and a T-triangular insert will have three cutting edges per face. Therefore, if both inserts cost £6 each, the square insert will cost £1.50 per edge, where the triangular insert will cost £2 per edge. This might not seem much, but cost saving is important, and we want you to get the most value for your money. So, pay close attention to the number of cutting edges on each insert, and a box of inserts will go much further. The angle. It's not always possible to get the best cost per edge. Sometimes you need to do a recess, undercut or profile, where unfortunately a wider angle insert just won't do, and you just have to bite the bullet and go for the shape with narrower angles that will do the job. The second letter. Relief. The second letter of the code refers to the relief angle on the side of the insert. These are either negative or positive. The most common is N, which is zero degrees, or as we call it, negative. This means that almost all the time, the insert can be flipped over and you can cut on the other face. This allows you to get double the amount of cutting edges and cuts the overall cost of the insert. All negative inserts are also held in tool holders by some form of clamp mechanism. So, why have positive relief inserts? There are two possible answers for this. The first is that certain soft materials, for instance, aluminium, prefer to be machined with as sharp an edge as possible, and it's more difficult to achieve this with a negative relief insert. Secondly, the most common reason is clearance. If you are machining the inside of a bore, unless the bore is very large, the underside face of a negative insert will hit or rub the inside diameter before the cutting edge touches. The clearance angle on a positive insert ensures this does not happen. There are roughly five common letters that symbolize a specific relief angle. C equals 7 degrees. P equals 11 degrees. D equals 15 degrees. E equals 20 degrees. And F equals 25 degrees. All positive inserts with a hole through the center tend to be secured in a tool holder or boring bar by a countersunk screw. The third letter. Tolerance. The third letter signifies the tolerance of the insert. We're going to gloss over this point, as it only signifies how accurate the parameters of an insert are. To be honest, I've never had a customer specify a tolerance class before. Of the millions of inserts we've sold, 99% have all been the same, the letter M. So as rule of thumb, always assume the third letter is an M. The fourth letter, clamping and chip breakers. 
The easiest way to explain this is to first describe the purpose of a chip breaker. When machining certain materials like cast iron, the cuttings are short chipping, meaning they naturally break off and form almost a type of dust. However, when cutting other materials, like steel, stainless steel and aluminium, the cuttings become long, stringy and spiral. As a result, these types of cuttings can be unmanageable, damaging and moreover dangerous. The solution is to break the cuttings, or swarf, into smaller pieces, in one of three ways. Break off naturally. Break against the tool. Or break against the workpiece. The ideal situation is if the swarf breaks off, naturally. If it breaks against the tool, the swarf can cause chip hammering and damage the tool. If it breaks against the workpiece, it can score and damage the surface finish. To encourage the swarf to break off naturally, manufacturers put a surface preparation on the face of most carbide inserts. It looks like a curved lip, running along the cutting edge. The purpose of this is, that the normally long chips, curl on the lip, and break off against themselves. Okay, so now we know what a chip breaker does, what does the fourth letter actually mean? It basically splits the inserts into three clamp types. One, no center hole, positive relief clamp down inserts. Two, cylindrical clamp hole, negative relief clamp down inserts. And three, screw hole, screw down inserts. Once you have identified what clamping mechanism holds down the insert, Next option is whether it has a chip breaker or not. In the case of negative relief inserts, there is also the option of whether it has a chip breaker on one or both faces. In our example, the G in CNMG tells us that it is a negative insert that is held down by a clamp and has a chip breaker on both faces. If it was a CNMM, there would only be a chip breaker on one face of the insert. The six numbers. The first two numbers, insert size. The first two numbers represent the edge length. If the insert has a rounded point, you would measure it as if it went to a sharp point. In the case where the insert is a trigon shape, W, remember, you measure the edge length, not from point to point. If you are measuring a round insert, R, your size is the diameter. With our example CNMG 120408, 12 signifies that the edge length is approximately 12 mm. The second two numbers, insert thickness. The second two numbers indicate the thickness of the insert. Going by the code, you would expect the numbers to correspond to a metric size. It doesn't however, and the reason for this is historical. The thickness of a carbide insert was actually originally sized in imperial. To avoid confusion, in metric countries they called 1 8th, size 0 3, because it was close to 3 mm, and 3 16th size 0 4, because it was the closest number above 4 mm. If it happened a size fell between two established sizes, for example 532 measures 3.96 mm, as the number was still within the same millimeter, they introduced the letter T to replace the 0. In the case of 532, it became T3, as it was less than 4 mm and more than 3. It all sounds very complicated. So, to help clear this up, using the refine search function on our site, the thickness ISO and millimeter drop-down show both the thickness size code and what the actual measurement in millimeters would be. The third two numbers, insert radius. The third two numbers are fairly straightforward. These signify the roundness of the point, or what we call the radius. This is measured in millimeters. In the case of our sample insert, CNMG 120408, the radius would be 08, and translates as 0.8 millimeters. When picking a radius it's important to consider two factors. The bigger the radius, the stronger the cutting point. A strong cutting point allows a heavier cut, or is more resistant to the point breaking when doing interrupted cuts. 
The downside to this is that a large radius does not produce as high a quality surface finish. Small radiuses are perfect for exceptional surface finishes, as they don't gouge the workpiece as much. However, the radius is not as strong, and to remove large amounts of material, more passes are required. Most machinists like to err on the side of caution and usually select a 0.8 radius as a happy medium, between strength and a reasonable surface quality. The next 0 to 2 letters, chip breaker geometry. Earlier when we discussed the first block of four letters, we said the fourth letter told us whether the insert has a chip breaker or not. As a quick reminder, the chip breaker helps break the cuttings, or swarf, into small, manageable segments. The letters here give us a better indication of what materials, operations, and conditions the insert is specifically designed for. Every manufacturer has their own way of referencing these, but for the sake of this video, we're going to be using the EdgeTech by Europa range from our website. These are split into operations based on the depth of cut of the insert, the type of material being machined, and whether the workpiece being machined has any interruptions. The depth of cut of an insert is basically how much material you plan to remove in a pass and is offset against the quality of the surface finish. Depth of cut operations are either specific or overlap, covering roughing, medium roughing, medium machining, fine to medium machining, semi-finishing, and finishing. The type of material being machined could cover steels, stainless steels, cast irons, heat-resistant superalloys, and aluminium, specifically or in multiples of these materials. It is important to know, an insert's tool life will be increased extensively, where it is only being used on the specific material it is designed for. However, sometimes it's good to have an insert that will cut multiple materials, at the sake of a slightly shorter tool life. An interruption can be described as, where during a rotation of the workpiece, there is a break in contact between the insert and the component. If there are interruptions it is important to know how frequent or severe these are. For instance, machining a solid cylindrical bar would be an uninterrupted cut. Machining a cylinder with a small slot or keyway would be considered a light interrupted cut. And machining a hexagonal diameter would be a heavily interrupted cut. Grades. The best way of explaining the composition of an insert is, to imagine making a rice crispy cake. When you start out, you have a bowl, the crispies, and the marshmallow. In an insert's case, the silicone and tungsten represent the crispies, and the cobalt is the marshmallow. The more crispies you have in your mix, the harder the cake becomes. With inserts, harder means more wear resistance. So if you're machining a very hard material, like tool steel, or something wear resistant, like cast iron, the harder the grade the more tool life your insert will have. So why not use really hard inserts all the time and not have any cobalt? Well the downside is, the harder the insert, the more brittle the carbide becomes. This can be an issue if you are taking heavy cuts, or machining a material with interruptions, as the carbide can fracture as a result of a combination of rapid heating, cooling, and impact. Adding cobalt to an insert's composition reduces this. Like marshmallow in a crispy cake, cobalt acts like a spongy glue and stands up well to impacts and heavier cuts, making the insert tougher. This is ideal for machining tough materials like stainless steels or heat-resistant alloys that don't like to give themselves up to cutting easily. However, the tougher an insert becomes, the quicker it wears away, in the same way marshmallow would melt quicker, without the crispies being in the mix. Unfortunately, the bowl when making a cake can only hold so many ingredients. So, you will lose wear resistance where your insert becomes tougher, and likewise lose toughness when selecting an insert that is more wear resistant. For this reason, Machining hard materials require inserts that have high tungsten and silicone quantities, but low amounts of cobalt. Machining tough materials require inserts with high amounts of cobalt, 
and lower amounts of tungsten and silicone. And somewhere in between, we have a balanced amount of tungsten, silicone and cobalt that can machine most materials. Insert coatings are a bit like the chocolate on the crispy cake. Either they are uncoated, highly polished for cutting soft materials, or have a colored coating, usually gold or black. The coating is actually not one but multiple layers of coatings that greatly improve the binding of the insert structure. Coatings also add lubricity, improve wear resistance, and reduce thermal damage to the carbide substrate below. We hope you found our carbide turning insert tutorial helpful and informative. In addition to this, there are other related tutorials and guides on our engineeringsupplies.co.uk website and on our YouTube channel. Keep checking back, as we plan to be adding to these regularly. Our tutorials will teach you all about our products. And our guides will show you how to use what you've learned, to easily and accurately pick the best product for your requirements, using special unique functions developed specifically for our website.